Hello and welcome back to Politico's AI and Tech Summit. I'm Vincent Manancourt, a reporter at Politico Europe, and I'm joined now by Didier Reinders, the European Commissioner for Justice and Consumers. Uh, just before we continue, uh, let, me, let me remark that this interview is uh, recorded, pre-recorded, uh, to accommodate the Commissioner's busy schedule. Um, and let me remind the audience that to ask questions via the Squap Card app and to tweet using hashtag PoliticoAI. Um, now, Commissioner, um, on Monday we had fresh revelations that spyware, Pegasus spyware, was used to target scores of politicians and activists in Catalonia. Um, just last week, there was reports that you yourself had been targeted by the same spyware. Um, how does it feel to know that perhaps your most intimate encrypted messages were being watched, uh, that your conversations were being recorded? Well, first of all, I want to say that I read and saw the, the same comments in the press, but uh, I didn't receive any information myself about the possible use of uh, such uh, spyware like Pegasus uh, against uh, myself and so uh, with uh, maybe uh, an intrusion on my smartphone. So I want to be clear on this. So it's very important to, to say that. I don't know if there are maybe some uh, information somewhere, but I didn't receive it myself. And so for the rest, you know that at the commission level, we are working with uh, dedicated services and specific experts to try to react if there are problems and we don't want to comment about the way we are using all services to find against uh, some possible uh, attacks or some possible cyber uh, attacks. And But again, I don't uh, have received myself such information about the use of a specific uh, spyware. About the, the main uh, issue... Just, just yeah? interrupt. So, so, you, so you deny that your, your device has been targeted by spyware? I don't deny that it was targeted. I deny that I received any information on this. I don't know, but uh, I was uh, very clear on, on this. We don't comment about the, the way to uh, protect all uh, devices and to work with all cyber uh, services. But just to say that I didn't receive from any provider, from any uh, uh, in interlocutor, the information that it was such a kind of spyware. And so if we have uh, different uh, possible attacks or different kind of problems, we are working with our services on this. But again, uh, I didn't receive any concrete information uh, uh, concerning the use of such a dedicated spyware. I know that there were many comments about uh, the possible uh, use, but uh, not uh, with a direct information to myself. The second element, I said about the, the general uh, discussion. Uh, of course, we need to be very uh, attentive to such a kind of uh, a situation. You know that I'm in charge of the correct implementation of the GDPR. So we are working with the data protection authorities at the national level to give a correct enforcement to the GDPR. Then, of course, we are working with the justice system because it's so possible to see the justice systems involved in such a kind of process. But the first possible reaction if to the con is to the concerned person to try to go to the DPA in one member state or to go to justice. And I've tried to uh, ask to the member state to provide to us information about the, the different proceedings. Uh, we have sent letters to the different member states uh, to say, uh, do you have received some uh, requests from different actors? And you know that in Hungary, to be very concrete, there was an inquiry from the DPA, the national DPA, and with the conclusion of such a national DPA, and now we are looking if there are some action in justice too. But uh, it's a real issue, and we are knowing that it's an issue dedicated to the national security. So it's very important to, to know what are the reactions to control uh, the possible access to personal data by the national security authorities, because you know that also in such a case, it must be a, a necessity and it must be proportionate. Um, go going back to um, whether, you know, whether you weren't or, or, or were targeted with, with spyware, um, what concrete advice have you received um, regarding security? And has that evolved since the Pegasus revelations? No, but again, I didn't receive any uh, information concerning a specific uh, spyware. But you know that all the providers are sending some information about the uh, possible use of your uh, password or different kind of other elements. And uh, 
all the time we are working with uh, all experts at the uh, level of the uh, commission to verify the situation and all the time we are updating our systems and we are using the more recent possible uh, tools to be uh, protected but you know that there is no uh, unlimited uh, protection against that so i don't want to comment about what is uh, uh, all action against different possible attacks uh, dedicated to cyber but again we try to to use all the possible tools at our disposal but what I've said is just that I didn't receive specific information concerning a specific spyware or a specific actor. Okay, so, so you didn't receive uh, specific information about a specific provider, but did you, pr were you provided with information about an espionage uh, attempt or attack more generally? No, but again, I don't want to comment about uh, all the messages that we receive from the providers. I'm just saying that I've seen so many comments of a possible use of Pegasus and maybe by some member states. I didn't receive such an information myself, but I don't want to uh, go further than that. And uh, just to say that for the rest, we try to see with the member states uh, how it was possible to... Uh, organize maybe investigations in different uh, specific cases dedicated to the national security, but in full respect with the rules. And you know that we have a decentralized system at the EU level. We don't have the capacity to organize investigations by ourselves in the commission. It's in the end also for the enforcement of the GDPR, in the ends of national authorities with the DPAs and with the justice system. And so my first question was, uh, uh, it was possible or not for some uh, concerned person to uh, introduce a real action to the DPA or uh, before the, the judges in justice. Um, you know, moving on slightly. So as, as you said, um, as we've become aware of growing evidence that spyware, whether it be Pegasus or other spyware used across the block, the commission has, you know, stuck firm to its line that it's up to the member states to investigate this. Uh, the European Parliament, on the other hand, has started an inquiry committee and said yesterday that it's for, you know, this kind of scandal is happening at a European level. It's for a European level to investigate. At what point does the Commission have to step in and look into these claims, especially as it becomes more and more evident that this is being used, you know, not just in one or two member states, but across the block. No, but we will follow, of course, very closely the, uh, the investigations organized by the European Parliament, we will see. And if there are some questions from the Parliament, we will answer. But uh, first of all, we try to ask to the member states to explain what the situation was. And again, I myself, with my services, try to uh, receive response about the fact that uh, uh, after some revelations, there were investigations by national authorities like the DPA in Hungary, or there were some actions in justice by the concerned person. And there we want to we try to collect information. But of course, we will follow the investigations organized by the European Parliament. And if there are more and more, like you said, evidence, it will be maybe possible uh, to, to act if we have the competence to act. But it's too early to say something about that because mm -hmm. you ask the question, if I will wait, if will be the reality or not. So, so you're not ruling it out some stage, the Commission stepping in and acting? But for the moment, we have taken a lot of initiative and certainly in the rule of law discussions that we have with the, with the member states. And you know that you have put on the table last year a first evaluation of the GDPR. We are looking for uh, a correct enforcement of the GDPR in all the member states. When we have seen some problems with, to give an example, the independence or the possible breach to the independence of the data protection authorities, we have react. I propose myself to introduce some infringement proceedings. And due to that, we have seen positive evolution, like in Belgium, with some change in the composition of the DPA. And we'll continue to do that. We are engaged in a real uh, action to have a correct enforcement of the GDPR. But again, you know that the GDPR, it's organized with a decentralized uh, system. It's in the end of national authorities to put uh, into place uh, the DPAs at the national level, and then to organize the process in justice. Of course, we try to see if it's with the correct functioning of the DPA, 
and we try to see if it's with an independent justice system. And uh, when there are some uh, uh, informations about a possible uh, uh, very important issue like this one, of course, we ask questions to uh, the member states. But again, if it's a national security issue, you know that it's a real national issue. We don't have any competence in this, except that uh, it's needed for the member state to follow the rules and to follow the national rules and to follow the main principles like the necessity and the proportionality in the way to use different kind of uh, investigative uh, systems. I, th I think we can move, move on to uh, GDPR and the enforcement mechanism in a bit. I just wanted to ask you quickly, uh, while we're on data protection, uh, about the, the agreement recently announced between the US and the EU on data flows, uh, announced by Ursula von der Leyen, the President of the Commission, and Joe Biden, uh, the President of the United States, um, recently. We were being told by officials working on the agreement that, you know, on that week that it wasn't ready. We're still being told that the details haven't been hammered out. Um, is this a case of political expediency winning the day? Did, did politics win over the you know, legal detail of the agreement in this case? I've started to discuss with my US colleagues in December 19. So it's quite long. So I've started to discuss with the uh, Attorney General at that time, William Barr, and to say, if, like you asked uh, in some minutes ago for another issue, if there is a decision of the Court of Justice, what is possible to do uh, to, to organize a, a successor to the privacy shield? So we have started before the decision of the court to think about the possible uh, situations that we will have. After the decision of the court, I have started a discussion with Will Boros, uh, uh, with the previous administration. And after the elections, we have started real negotiations with uh, First of all, Gina Raimondo, uh, and uh, at the same moment, of course, I have had many contacts with, the, again, the new uh, Attorney General, Mary Garland. And it was a long negotiation in one year, not only at the political level. I went two times uh, to Washington at the end of last year to, the, to discuss and to negotiate. And we have received also our U.S. counterparts here in Brussels, and we have uh, had many meetings at the technical level with the services. And so at the end of such a process, it was a moment to say, do we have the possibility to continue and to translate a political agreement in the legal text? Or is it needed to say that uh, we don't have the capacity to solve the different issues put on the table by the uh, uh, European Court of Justice? And from the beginning, I've said uh, we are in confrontation with a binding decision of the court. So it's our Supreme Court, the Court of Justice, and we need to uh, uh, follow the requirement of the court. So now what is it? We have a political agreement on different principles, so an agreement in principle, and we will receive uh, as soon as possible now the first uh, legal text coming from the US. We will see the conformity of those texts with the agreement, and then we will uh, uh, go to uh, an executive order if it's possible, of uh, the President Biden and maybe some implementing uh, uh, decisions, administrative decisions. On such a basis, if we have such a set of new uh, legal instruments, we will start at the EU level our own procedure, the adequacy decision procedure. And you know, when, sorry, when, in when, reference when... with UK, mm -hmm. that take uh, six months. So I will say that we are now a process till at least the end of the year before to, to have a final decision on this. When can we expect those first, first texts uh, on the EU side that will, that will kickstart the whole process of ratification on the EU side? I'm hoping it depends from the, the text coming from the US, of course, but uh, I'm hoping that uh, before during the summer, it will be possible to start mm -hmm. our process. But again, we are in the hands now of the US administration, so I'm hoping that we will receive very soon uh, the first legal text. But I want to say that what was um, the, main, uh, the, the main issue was the capacity to organize a review of a decision uh, to have an access to uh, different personal data. And you know that it was one of the main requirements of the uh, Court of Justice to organize. And now we have uh, such a kind of review. And now we have uh, an agreement on such an important element to have a data protection review court mm -hmm. organized with independent person uh, in the in the court, and so we are waiting for the legal text, the executive order, to see how it's possible to organize that. And before that, the other main requirement 
was again, like we have discussed before, uh, the, the full respect for the principles of necessity and proportionality when there is an access to some personal data. And that's also an important element. So we have tried to work on those main issues, certainly at the political level. Of course, there were many other technical issues uh, to solve. And the, the, the goal is not to have exactly the same system in the US that in Europe. We are fully aware that we have different legal systems, but we want to have full respect for the same principles. Sure. Um, moving now to the GDPR, uh, you'll be aware that there's a, a big conference organized by the European Data Protection Supervisor on the, the functioning, on the enforcement of the GDPR, which is Europe's flagship data protection regulation. And there has been criticism of perhaps the slowness and ineffectiveness of enforcement um, of this rulebook. Do you think it's the right time to be having this discussion? Do you think it could be the time to be discussing you know, reforming the rule book and the way it's enforced? The way to enforce the, the GDPR, certainly, so to, to see that there is a correct implementation by the member state. But I will say uh, it's a young child. Three years is not so old. And so I'm quite impressed sometimes to see that there are so many reactions to say uh, we are not at the end of the road. Of course, we are not at the end of the road. We have put on the table, I said, an evaluation of the GDPR. And then we have uh, said that we'll come with an evaluation of all uh, also the adequacy decisions that we have with different third countries. But what is at stake for the moment? It's first of all to see if uh, we have a correct implementation in the member states, like for many other tools. Huh? Uh, I've started many infringement proceedings. I've asked the Commission to start many infringement proceedings for a correct implementation of a lot of legislative instruments at the EU level. Mm -hmm. It's the same for the GDPR. So the first request, is it possible to see enough resources, human resources, financial resources for the DPA, the Data Protection Authorities? And I will say that, just to give an example, in Ireland, where you know there are a lot of providers, we have seen a real improvement in the way to give more and more financial resources, technical resources, and human resources to the DPA. Is it possible to have an independent DPA? I've said already, uh, when we have seen a problem in one of another member state, we have announced that we'll start an infringement proceeding, and we have seen some movement to go back to a better implementation of the independence of the DP. And so we'll continue to see how it's possible also, like you said, to go fast, to go away too long before to have a decision. But I want to insist, I know that there are a lot of discussions about some possible decisions, again, maybe in Ireland, uh, but it's about complex issues. And again, it's normal that it takes some time, not too long. So we are in discussions with the national authorities, also in Ireland, with the government, with the uh, Data Protection Authority, to say you need to, of course, to analyze very uh, closely the situation, but you need to come with a conclusion. And we have seen already some I fines, important fines, decide also in Ireland. So it's a process, and we continue to uh, be engaged in the great enforcement of the GDPR. I'm, I'm going to have to close it there. We're, we're out of time, unfortunately. Thanks very much for coming uh, and speaking to me today, Commissioner. Uh, I will come back on this, I'm sure. <laughs> that, thanks very much. Um, so that, that was my conversation with the Commissioner Reinders. Uh, we talked about uh, Pegasus and perhaps uh, you know, looking at the GDPR and how it's enforced. Please hang around, stay seated. Uh, up next is my colleague, Peter Hack, who will be looking at acting on data, dissecting Europe's ambition for a buzzing data economy as a panel discussion. Thanks very much.